So let's talk about this, the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups deals with social niceties. It deals with mingling with other people, working well with other people, collaborating with other people, but it's a Cups energy. So this deals more with like friendships. It deals more with like um, social exchanges with other people where it doesn't have to be so, you know, uh, heavy. It can be very superficial. It can also be very light. It could just be, you know, mingling with other people. And I can tell right off the bat, I feel like some of you are great at this, okay? If you, like, have um, five minutes to make a really good first impression, you guys got it down. You guys make really, really good first impression. And, and um, the reason for that is that many of you have a myriad of life experiences to draw from. So when, when you meet somebody new and they mention, oh, you know, for example, I live in Texas, you can draw an experience from your past related to Texas. Or they can say, yeah, I work in the pharmaceutical company. You know, you're very uh, intelligent and you're very well read and you're very on top of current events. So you could draw an example from your past from pharmaceutical. And so whatever someone is throwing at you, you always have a way to kind of make that connection so that the other person feels validated, okay? However, the problem becomes when the superficial interaction um, lasts for too long. So, for example, if you're not able to, um, you know, get at any depth to the conversation with another person, you'd rather not pursue it. You'd rather just, you know, kind of just cast it aside. And then if you're constantly, constantly forced to socialize and mingle and, you know, socialize and mingle in order to establish connections, in order to network, in order to do something uh, to benefit your job, you feel almost as if, you're selling out. You feel almost as if this is, you know, not what I signed up for and you feel very fake, right? And so it's kind of like a double-edged sword. On the one hand, you come across as you're as being very sociable, but on the other hand, I feel like you deep down you do want those deep rooted, honest, authentic connection and this kind of like darting from one flower to the next, being that social butterfly, it's not really going to fly anymore this month. You would rather step away from all this superficiality and look for something deeper. So I do feel many of you, there's this conundrum here. This is like the, the person that's the life of the party, very vibrant, very well-traveled, very worldly, has a myriad of life experiences, and quite independent, okay? And the people that you're encountering, they might tend to be a little bit more cliquish. You know, they have their cliques, they have their groups, they have their, they have like a fixed set of people that they hang out with on a regular basis. So trying to get your foot in the door or trying to barge in it just feels uh awkward it also feels a little bit inauthentic and so you're going to be dealing with circumstances uh social you know groupings and you're going to be dealing with this i feel for many of you in your personal life okay personal social life um, how do I find this group of people that I can hang out with? How do I, you know, become a part of this group? How do I get my way in? And the best strategy in life in general is not to try so hard, okay? Not to try to, no matter what they're saying, try to find every example in the book to relate to what they're saying. Life doesn't really work like that. So let things kind of organically um, play out. Otherwise, you're going to feel like this. You're going to feel out of place. You're going to feel vulnerable and exposed. And then you're going to start to feel like, are they judging me? Or do they feel I'm inauthentic? Am I trying too hard? Okay? So that's the first thing I want you to be a little bit careful about. And I feel for many of you, you've been all work, work, work. You've been really, really busy with work with your personal life, family, and, you know, uh, relationships as well. And I feel like you're kind of coming out of your shell this month, and you're trying to find that community of people 
that you can connect to, that you can go out with, that you can have like these more lighthearted um, interactions with. And the minute that you do that, I, I feel this automatic sense of regret. Like the minute that you step out of your, you know, your lair and you're trying to connect to other people and you're just like, wow, I don't really have anything in common with them. I don't really have, you know, um, so for example, some of you have mortgage responsibilities, family that you're taking care of. Um, and, you know, just a lot of things that are, I want to say that you would consider a little bit more serious and then you might be hanging out with, you know, uh, singles people that don't have the mortgage, don't have the responsibilities. And so when you're talking, their problems and your problems are like night and day and you feel this inability to connect and to relate. And so I'm just going to say this. I feel like you're scrambling to find people that you can have the emotional connection with. And if it's not apparent right off the bat, then I just don't feel they're the right relationship for you or the right people for you. So don't force it. When the connection happens, it's going to be natural and it should be natural. It should be instinctive. It should be intuitive. It should be, you know, felt on a very deep personal level. So don't try to fit this into, you know, this. Okay, so don't try to fit this, whatever this is, that's not working where you feel like I can't really connect with these people. Don't mistake that for this because it's going to come along for you. And when it's there, you're going to feel it at the very core of your being where you can feel exposed and vulnerable and you feel like, oh, they're not judging me. I feel safe. So in the process of finding, you know, that group where you can belong, that um, that sense of belonging, that sense of, you know, the, the I, I, I want to even say that sense of fraternity or even the sorority. Some of you might be in college dealing with this and, you know, you're, you're just not feeling the people that you're around. Um, some of you are just in a work environment and you're trying to find people that you can have these solid, meaningful connections with. And it's going to come into the picture for you. You have to experience this awkwardness first in order for you to appreciate when things mesh well on a soul level with another person or with a group. Okay, so this I feel has been happening for you guys since January. So I don't know um, if there has been some major, major, you know, like uh, new people in the work environment, in the school environment, in the internship environment. But things have been few, j things just felt a little bit out of out of sync energetically and also communication wise and emotionally. Things have been kind of like fluctuating in your life since January. The month of April was when you're praying and you're just like, please let me find that kindred spirit that I can have that connection with. And I feel for many of you, you were praying for love. You were praying for, you know, that deep rooted relationship. You're praying for less superficiality and you're praying for something that is a little bit more meaningful, a little bit deeper. I'm also sensing for many of you praying for a big job here, praying for a job interview to go well, because you don't like it when you're in kind of like a panel interview and everyone's staring at you. So you could, you know, at normal times in your life, be very, very, very confident. But when you're in a panel of people and they're sitting there shooting questions at you and you have to, you know, answer the questions one by one and it can feel very nerve-wracking and i feel like you know that's normal for everybody so there's something here that indicates to me discomfort and it's going away it's january from january to april it is shifting away march might have been the time where it was like ugh that was really uncomfortable and then april was when the energy died down and now we're moving into the month of may and everything is spectacular so let me talk about a few things let me talk about your career and your work okay um, because that is the second message coming out here 
this is a card about success and this is like very public um you know the spotlight is on you you are the the one thing that everyone is gravitating towards and you're the person that everyone is kind of looking at or looking up to so this overall basically means you're going to be really 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 happy and satisfied and just um very lucky overall to be able to attract the people that you want and to be able to attract the types of job and the the career accolades and the recognition that you're looking for and a lot of it has to do with kind of like easing up okay so first we have the three of cups here and Aquarius you are really notorious for um, being very like um, you have a you always have an idea of what you want okay and then I feel like some of you get stubborn to the point where you're just like I want this if I can't have this, I don't want anything else. I'd rather have this. If not, I'd rather be by myself. If I can't have it exactly like this, I'd rather not have it at all. So that mentality, you're easing up. This is a card about acceptance, okay? This is like being obstinate, wanting exactly what it is that you kind of envision, even though whatever is offered in front of you might even be better options, might even be more in alignment with you but no you want that specific thing and then when you can't have that specific thing you don't want it at all so obstinate energy very stubborn very fixed and not being able to verbalize even to yourself or to others or to the universe why is it that you want this and you're so fixated on it that I'm giving you all these things and you're not you're still not able to compromise so in the reverse position I feel like this stroke of luck and all these good things are coming to you guys because you are becoming a lot more appreciative you are becoming less fixed less rigid less obstinate and you're willing to kind of open yourself up and be a little bit more flexible I can have exactly what I want, but these options are just as good. So I'm going to make the most of it. Okay, so I feel like you're easing up. You're becoming a little bit more flexible. You're becoming overall a lot more grateful for everything that you have that the universe has offered you. Everything that's offered from other people as well. You're becoming a lot more open and a lot more um, just like I, the, the word is mutable mutable so it looks really good and the career success is coming in mainly because you know once we appreciate everything that's given to us once we actually see what's in front of us and we start to to kind of think about like um, you know life is not so bad there are other people out there that don't have many options but I have a lot of options so I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to stop moping. I'm going to stop whining. And I'm going to stop, start, you know, um, making the most and building upon these opportunities. It's not to say that you guys mope or whine. I don't feel like you guys are whiners. But a lot of the times, too, and this is kind of like a fallacy with everybody, not just with you guys. But it's worse with the fixed signs like you, Taurus, uh, Scorpio, you and Taurus in particular. Oh, my gosh. So it's sort of like you want certain things to be a certain way. And a lot of it boils down to the need to control our environment and the need to kind of like um, take out that element of surprise. And so when things don't exactly go the way that you want, it's hard for you to switch gears because you're so mentally, personally, emotionally invested in something that it's hard for you to kind of like, um, you know, stop digging in deeper and just kind of like switch gears, right? So this is the month for us to do that. This is the month for us to be flexible. And this is the month for us to, when we feel that, you know, that um, that wave of frustration or anger come on, when we're not getting exactly what the other person said they were going to deliver or we're not getting exactly the results that we're looking for we want to take a deep breath and then we want to look at the flip side okay i don't have this but on the flip side what do i have i'm not offered this job but on the flip side what else is available or you know for those who are dating 
this person is not, you know, giving me 100%. But on the flip side, what else is available for me? So let's, you know, try to do that devil's advocate and just see what else is available. Keep yourself very flexible because I feel like something's on the offing that is amazing and you might be in danger of missing it if you're pining after things that have already been lost as well, okay? So overall, career-wise, I feel there is a major stroke of luck that's coming in for you. And I also feel as well, this deals heavily with uh, education. So it's like mastery of something, you know, having either higher education under your belt, having a lot of training, having a lot of um, life experience, even life experience, you know, people don't really give it as much uh, merit as it deserves, but life experience uh, means a lot especially in in our day and age when we are dealing uh, more with like multi multicultural work settings having life experience and being able to relate to people from all different walks of life it matters a great deal um and if you're able to connect with somebody on such a personal you know in a personal way it can make or break a business deal for example it can also make or break you know uh, how you do on an interview, right? Like if you have a panel of people and there's one person that you are able to make a really, really strong personal connection with. For example, you might have, you know, graduated from the same university. You might have lived in the same city and you make that really, really strong, solid connection with that person. That person can influence the whole panel to hire you. So personal connections go a long way. And I feel this is you guys. This is always like, you know, what I would imagine Aquarius. Mastery of many, many things. But I feel like for many of you, it's difficult to see how you can combine all of your knowledge to get you where you want to go. This is the, the month where I feel like it's the beginning of something. It's the beginning process where you are consolidating, putting everything together. What have I done in the past? What do I know? How is my work experience connected to my educational experience? Uh, what are my long-term goals and how am I going to be able to get there? What can I rely on in the past to get me to you know, where I need to go? And so I feel like you're consolidating. You're consolidating your knowledge of the outer world. You're consolidating your knowledge of yourself. And you're trying to figure out what career path will make me happy. I also feel as well, you're trying to get yourself in a place where how can I seek freedom? How can I, you know, um, remove the, the chains and the blockages in my own life? How can I seek financial security and working for myself as well? So I feel like a lot of self-employment, a lot of um, entrepreneurial um, uh, entrepreneurial endeavors kind of brewing in the picture for many of you Aquarius and I feel it's almost like many of you are kind of uh, you're looking around and you're just like I wish I had you know mentors or I wish I had somebody uh, that has been through it before so that I can kind of pick their brain so I wish I had an uncle who is like an entrepreneur I wish I had parents that were like, you know, college graduates so that they can show me the ropes. And you're feeling a little bit envious of people that might have already, you know, gone that route, that might have the proper mentor, that might have had the, the, the guidance. But I can assure you, Aquarius, you're not one to walk in anybody's footsteps. It's helpful, but I feel like for many of you, the fun thing is in tackling a problem, unraveling it to try to find a solution on your own. So even if you had somebody, you know, that has already been there and you could pick their brain, the fun, the, the fun part of it is for you to figure things out on your own. And I can already feel like even if they're telling you, you should do this, you should do that, you're not really going to listen. So it's kind of like, you know, in one ear, out the other. And so... Who cares, right? So why do we need that if we already know what we're going to do? 
So the only thing that's really standing in your way now is like consolidating all the knowledge, creating kind of like a strand of knowledge rather than all these, you know, disparate things, weave it some way into a strand so that things are connected and things are related. And once you're able to find the connectivity between different ideas, different work experiences, different things, you're going to realize that everything is all related. And that's where you're going to be able to bust yourself out of these, you know, restrictions that you've been feeling. I feel a lot of people wanting to start a business, wanting to uh, be self-employed, feeling really, really stuck where they are because their skills are not being acknowledged. Well, this is the month where somebody is really going to acknowledge your skill and they're going to, they're not just going to, you know, tell you quietly, hey, you're really smart. You solved this problem that God is all stumped. I feel like there's going to be some type of a public acknowledgement of your mastery of your skills. There's also going to be a situation where I feel like you're going to be walking on stage or you're going to be in the public eye and you're going to be sharing um, your skills, your expertise with a group of people. So it could be like a training seminar, a uh, public speaking event, pub like a speaking engagement where you're getting, you're getting into a public area and I feel like, you know, it's, it's always uncomfortable, right? It's always nerve-wracking. But at the end of it, you're going to feel really proud of your accomplishments. And I also feel it's going to lead the way for more opportunities, for future engagement, for, you know, other opportunities to be coming into the picture as well. And um, that's what's really going to help jumpstart your career. It's not just the main job that you're doing. It's all the other side jobs. It's all the other opportunities that you're taking to enhance your visibility in the work environment in your professional life. So it's not just about, you know, networking. Networking is all like intangible, right? Like it's all these connections that we have and, and the right knowing the right people and, you know, being seen with the right people. But no. And I feel like deep down you know this. These are very superficial. Why don't we instead go out and get things done? You know, like uh, leading a, a group of people, doing a public uh, speaking event, educating the public, showing people what we know and showing people how much we know. These are a little bit more concrete and tangible and measurable. So the whole time you were just like, iffy about this, but you're iffy about it for the right reason because you know that there is substantially a lot more out there that can be had if you take the actions rather than relying on the connections, right? 